Um, I'm Christian Wilmes uh, and uh, I work with um, Espen and Mieko and Helge from um, the University of Oslo, the uh, Cultural History Museum of Oslo, on a, a Norwegian pollen data set. And I will um, explain to you how we prepared it for publication as an open data set. So it's more a data management and uh, open data talk. Um, the, the talk will be structured at first. Uh, at first, I will give you an overview of what this data set uh, is about. Then we will have a short look into um, current data management practices in the domain of palynology. Then some technicalities of how this data is then um, prepared and uh, transformed for uh, being able to be published as an open data set. And then some, uh, depending on the time left, uh, some like say previews on how this data will be um, applied mm -hmm. for creating paleo environmental informations. So um, this is a map of the coring locations of this data set. This is a, like a big folder with um, t uh, more than 1000 Telia files. Telia is uh, a software uh, for handling uh, palynology data. Um, these thousand files are about uh, 357 cores in 231 unique locations. And of these uh, 357 cores, 200 have a proper age model within the data. So that's um, what we're trying to get from like this um, proprietary data format, uh, Telia data format, which is also um, um, like um, Helge Hoek it was a professor or um, a palynologist for his career in Norway. And he started in the late 70s uh, already using computers to store his palynological data. And so we have also quite old um, yeah, uh, encodings and uh, yeah, first iterations of this uh, Telia proprietary data format. So there were also some technicalities to be uh, overcome to make use of this data. So um, I already uh, had the presentation last year in Tübingen about this data set. This was more about the R aspect. Um, on the analysis of the data, which this data um, will be used for to create highly environmental uh, information and maps. So if you uh, are interested in this, um, you can download it uh, from the uh, CSC 806 database. It's a project I'm working for as an open data set. Uh, also just Google this and you might find it. So now we have a short look into um, current uh, data management practice in the palynology domain, <laughs> which is uh, there's a German rap song currently also about uh, standards, but some not the standards we're talking about. He's very keen on uh, having a standard. So me as well. <laughs> so um, short um, some some short comic scripts from. <coughs> KCD about why we might want to uh, use standards for data modeling. So it's all about like interoperability and be able to integrate data. So you need to have some common denominator and that's what the standard in this uh, aspect is about. So um, there's also everyone thinks he can come up with some new and better ideas and there will be even more standards. Uh, and this is what this talk will be about, how I find out which standards I can use to work with. This is about how, uh, how it is important to write uh, date and time in some uh, yeah, uh, standard, in some common um, notation to be able to, as you all know, working with computers, interpret it correctly, which is quite important. So. Um, we now look at some uh, existing uh, repositories and databases uh, for pollen, of which one larger one is the European Pollen Database. You find this in this URL. 
uh, this database is um, uh, like maintained by these institutions and they uh, this has a really complex entity relationship diagram that you can download like a Postgres dump or a Paradox was an older format for relational database uh, solution um, file and make use of it. This is quite uh, technically advanced to make use of this data set. You can, um, if you are like um, not into administrating databases, it might be a difficult task to, to make use of this data. Mm -hmm. So, but it's quite good um, uh, documented, and if you have persons technically uh, able, uh, you can make use of it. It's uh, downloadable. So um, here's from the manual. Actually, this was the idea was founded also in Krakow in uh, 1988 for this Poland database. Uh, as they write in their manual and they already had some concerns about uh, data formats but uh, they also ended up uh, with their own data format more or less uh, as I already told you it's quite complex entity relationship um, model and the, like the biggest uh, polynology database uh, I found on the web is this a Neotoma uh, paleo paleoecology database, which is, um, if you have a look at this um, techniques uh, behind it, also like more or less the same entity relationship diagram uh, as the European Pollen database. So I do not know it exactly, but I assume it's just an evolution of the European Pollen database or this schema and they uh, developed it a bit further and also applied it for their data. So um, it's uh, a yeah, really powerful um, uh, data model, but uh, with this li like big um, capabilities also comes big complexity. If you just want to um, uh, use some point data, it's possible here to use an API it's also uh, uh, quite uh, easy, but at least, uh, as you know, not everyone is also capable or willing to do this for downloading data. So, uh, yeah, that's and it's also um, if you hand them in some data, you you just hand them also like a spreadsheet, and they will take care of putting this into their database. So it's uh, like an, there's no um, simple mechanism for just uh, preparing the data in their data format to be uh, loaded into their database. It's a complex task. So then uh, another repository uh, having a quite different approach, the Pangea database uh, it's from the Alfred Wegener Institute. Uh, um, in the geoscience domain, quite known platform for open geoscience data uh, in from all all domains of um, geoscience, but also for palynology, and they are very um, how to say not um, not uh, how to, uh, dat data format agnostic, you could say. So they do not want you to have some special format requirements. They only have to like some um, best practices which they uh, recommend, like some like um, uh, yeah, more or less uh, Selbstverständlichkeiten more um, in German, <laughs> um, like yeah, good practices for being uh, having a proper data set for reusability but no demands on how you do the notations. And uh, if you do like pollen uh, data, you have um, taxons of different plants. And it's quite important that you uh, have some certain identifier to address the exact same taxon. And what it's normally working, they use a Latin uh, taxon name from the definitions of uh, palynologists and then they see if this matches or not. 
for a computer it's not so easy. For you it's very easy maybe, if there is a space more or less or just uh, small or uh, um, yeah, um, capital characters. So all these things are um, not addressed in this uh, domain. And but uh, or at least no, not officially addressed. So they of course address it in the technical nitty gritty in the databases. Um, so uh, basically, if you uh, load uh, a point data set into Pangea, you are uh, more or less uh, on your own to take care of these things. They will have a look at it and say if there are obvious flaws, you might have to correct this, but. Um, they, um, yeah, say you are more or less free to do it how you think it's best. Actually, similar approach from the um, NOAA, uh, US based uh, paleoclimatology um, <coughs> data center, I would say quite similar to Pangea. I think they were before Pangea, so Pangea is maybe the German or European copy of this one. Uh, also a well renowned uh, point for going for paleo environmental information of all kinds from the geoscience domain and also Poland as you see. And they are also quite free in data contribution requirements like Pangea more or less say uh, refer you to some um, uh, species codes for trees, but it's not for pollen domains, it's from the tree ring data, but you could also use them for the plants of the pollen, more or less. But maybe not all of them will be covered in this um, files. Um, yes, and um, if you search around uh, on the web to handle pollen data, more or less you always end up uh, on this software tier which is more or less a yeah, de facto standard for, uh, for handling uh, pollen data, which is um, like, okay, they have like free versions for students and everything, but I think it's not, from, from my personal perspective, a good idea to have a proprietary system, even if it's in good faith developed for the, for the community and also I understand that the persons who uh, invest their time for it uh, will make uh, uh, yeah, a living from it. But I think it's not a good idea to have like a proprietary data format as a standard for handling some domain's data. So it would be maybe good if they could define an open interchange format for which is also um, available. So this is what the software looks like. More or less, you have like spreadsheets in which you um, organize your data. Uh, you have here uh, uh, like uh, uh, information about the depths of. Uh, so you go here in, the, in depth in the core, and here you have the different taxa, and also some. In this case, two H models, two different H models for each depth. You have a uh, computed or assigned H. And then here you have the different counts of the different point taxa. So that's more or less it, how, you, how, the, how it's done. So it's not too complex for, for describing this data. And um, yeah, we asked it, um, Dr. Grimm, so uh, the student working with me, he's now doing a um, um, master's thesis about this data set, about the analysis of the data set wrote him and asked him about this and he more or less he's really uh, also I think the person behind the Neotoma database and uh, that's what he answered. So they are preferred taxonomies but not um, like standardized ones and uh, the, yeah, the common sense things like misspellings are very common and stuff which uh, would be covered by standard that's um, yeah, addressed like on your, I would say you are self-responsible for doing it right. So um, he referred us to uh, this uh, table, which we can download from this URL and then <coughs> filter it. And then we have like a table with all the taxa codes in. 
this is what we then also applied for our um, um, uh, approach, which we kept straightforward. So this is a doxa table in uh, Open Office. So we have here these codes which we can apply. Some things which I don't like uh, very much from this is that there are like special characters like dots and dashes and uh, parentheses even in the short codes. From a, like a computer science perspective, that's not good practice. You should only have alphanumerical signs in such codes, but it works with uh, uh, modern programming languages and stuff, so that's fine. So we, we decided to use these codes to mark up this um, Norwegian point data to be able to integrate it to this community. And we now plan to prepare publication for aiming first for the, this high, more or less high impact journal for data sets. Um, and they also have like quite um, free um, submission guidelines. So you, you deposit your data more or less in an existing repository, get a DOI and then provide this for review with an according description of the data set to this uh, journal which will be reviewed then. And after review, hopefully published. Uh, um, so they also do not demand any formats of just that it all makes sense more or less. This will be part of the review then, I guess. Another journal, Open Access Journal in the domain, MD, from MDPE, this big journal, uh, Open Access Publisher, they more or less do it, have like more or less the same demands for publishing the data set. So it's just uh, less uh, APC, le less uh, charges for publishing it, and it is has not uh, uh, the high impact factor, which is maybe interesting. So that's what we then have a really simple uh, schema, how to say. One meta table for this, um, many files, which for any file we have just these informations, we have some overview. And um, then the data files itself also really simple, as you've seen in the TIA format, just a simple CSV file with this information in for each. And uh, this would be like an example I just made up, like how it would look like a really simple table. And this can be stored in easily accessible UTF-8 CSV file, and then it will be zipped in a zip archive accessible by any computer platform. And straightforward, simple, no relation database and everything. And everybody is free to import it then back into this relational database setup if he wants or not. And that's, uh, time is up, so that's just... Um, yeah, uh, I, I could ask is, um, if our next speaker is here, Marcia de Caira Bastos, you are there. Ah, this, okay, you. then we'll stop. Time this, um, <laughs> <laughs> this I already presented in the last, no, no, it's fine. Well, I already um, presented this one more detailed in the, the last year's talk, if you're interested. Yeah, yeah. Google it and you can download it. This was some um, R package, um, applied to the status to uh, create other environmental information. So, thank you very much.